Beep, beep. What is up, guys? My name is Sam World, and today, for some reason, I woke up and I just wanted to make a video about pads. They don't get as much love as the leads in the baseline. We seem to be more like bass people nowadays. Pads play a huge important role in creating atmosphere for certain genres of music, as well as some of them tend to be the center of attention of certain songs. So today, we're gonna discuss some techniques and tips that you can utilize just to get your pads to sound better or for you to store in your little bag of tricks and tips learned from Sen to pull them out whenever you need to. Now, usually when I make these kind of videos, I like to do a little bit of research and look around to see if there's some other cool tips and techniques besides the ones I have to add to the video, but I couldn't find that many. So I hope these tips help you guys out. And with that being said, if you want to support my channel, you know the deal, evilsounds.com, guys, for my sound design work. Uh, best way to support me. And let's get straight into making some pads. All right, guys, and welcome inside of Ableton. Now, for our first tip, we're going to run into something that I find most people that are beginner to intermediate do, uh, or just people that don't know much about music theory and just learned how to make chords. So most people will say, let's make a pad and you know they'll do something here. We'll use one of the more overused progressions out there. Uh, that sounds good, I guess, but some people will be like, I kind of want it to sound warmer. So they'll start to lower it down. And it sounds okay. Now here's the first mistake is that, and it sounds okay, but just like a piano, when you play a piano with these notes so together, it starts to sound a bit muddy. Uh, the reason for that is you just have an abundance of frequency in the mid lows and the low end, it never sounds good. So what can you do? Well, the first thing is that you can do the dead mouse route, which, you know, dead mouse likes to use a lot of just chords without that middle. And that just gives you that nice warm vibe. When I take that middle note away, the vibe completely changes. Now let's make sure that we are not EQing out the lows. Usually I have one of these. And that just sounds instantly warmer. And this is some a vibe that a lot of people like to have, but again, they make that mistake with that third note. Now, there's nothing wrong with the third note. It's just an abundance there. So let's say, for instance, that you actually want to have that, then you have to create an inversion. You have to open voice it uh, so that it doesn't sound so bunched up together. And that's how we get that nice, shiny pad, a pad called Nostalgia there. If you want to give it a bit of a tack to make it a traditional pad. All right, cool. So that's the first tip. It's just open voicing. It's a pretty simple one, but I find, again, people always seem to make that mistake. And this works also with pianos. If you want a very warm vibe, do open voicing or just have the first, the root note, if it's playing super low, and the fifth uh, playing together, the third note in the triad of your chord. Um, and it's going to sound very warm and very amazing. And a lot of times you get a vibe that you just look for. And any, any chord progression you do, you just don't get it. A lot of times it's because you're not emphasizing the right notes. Okay, so that is going to be the first tip. Now let's assume that we like this and we want to put a pluck on top of it. So for the second tip, I added another pad because that pad we had was just too friendly. It didn't have a lot of highs or mids. Uh, so let's assume we have this plug. Now, the problem usually that happens with pads is that they tend to drown out other sounds because they're just so big. They cover a huge frequency spectrum. Uh, you can definitely level down, but let's assume that you just want the pad to be loud and you want it to be like, <clears throat> uh, what can we do? Well, gladly we can EQ. And there's this thing called mid-side EQ, which most people should know about. And if you don't, then now you know. Uh, you can find that inside of Ableton by just going here and switching from stereo to mid-side. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow this edit here to go from S to M. M is gonna stand for mid or mono in the center of the mix, and S is gonna stand for the stereo. Now, if we hear this pluck without any effects, um, Uh, we can kind of hear that it's in the center of the mix. However, the effects make it wide, sound kind of wide. It's due to the delay. Now, the issue is going to happen is that the pads are going to take up frequencies that that pluck is. So what can we do? Well, the first thing that we can do is we can use mid-side EQ. We're going to target the mid signal because that's where the, where the pluck resides. It's very important that you guys understand the difference between stereo 
and center. Uh, once we understand that, we can go into M and find the frequency where the plug just shines the most, which is going to be usually around the 500 to 700 hertz area. Uh, so we're going to boost there, and you're going to see what happens if we have that. It's like just a mess because nothing has space. So in order to fix that, we just obviously reduce, but um, usually reducement there, if you have that issue, helps. Now, if we get rid of, let's say, um, the delay real fast so we can hear the sound. You can hear the difference. So essentially, we're making room for that plug by utilizing mid side EQ. Now, this can work for everything, but again, this is an issue I see with a lot of people where they have too much pads and whatnot. Now, another issue that's going to happen with pads sometimes is that when we have, let's say, uh, like a couple of notes playing, like a huge amount, so let me put in a MIDI for that. You can kind of hear, it's, it's not the cleanest vibe. I mean, if you're going for that resonating vibe, cool. But a lot of people, when they use pads, and when you hear it a lot in like Anjuna Deep stuff, Yodo and stuff, they have such a clean vibe. And sometimes it's because they're not using as many notes. But let's assume that you want to use many notes. And what can we do? Well, instantly what I'm going to do is go in with a pad and just find frequencies that tend to ring, uh, not ring, but sound resonating. They're not resonating frequencies because they're not like <laughs> the whole time. But... Um, they can cause a little bit of a strain. So we're going to go in with audition mode and just go into the path. It's going to be one. We're going to lower a bit. And then there's one more, I believe. We can... You can just excuse this. We're going to add a bit of a boost here just to give it a bit of air. What I find something that's bad with me is that I never do this to certain things, but this boost in air just feels, makes it sound a little bit more open. Uh, it's mixing engineers and people will always say add a bit of air. Now we're not boosting highs because there's no highs to boost, but there's still a bit of space there that we can bring up with just doing a simple EQ like that. Now, the next issue I find a lot is that a lot of people will utilize pads and they'll like the low end from the pad, so they'll leave it. And there's nothing wrong with that because you get a really nice vibe from it. The problem is that a lot of times the low end is made wide and it sounds like this. Now, if we mono it, we can center that. And it just gives you an instant cleaner fit. Do you get an instant cleaner feel? Feel I can't even feel uh, when uh, you have that on. Now another tip for pads too, as well, especially with pads that are going to be more open and more like press and more lush so if you go with heaven is where the heart is i love my name and one of the things i like to do is i like to put an ozone imager a uh, pads are going to again cover the whole frequency spectrum so one of the things we can do with them um, is we can definitely run like an imager on it and click learn
Once it's done learning, we can audition every frequency and then give it its own space in the stereo image. So this is the low end, which you can see it's all fucked. Uh, so we're going to lower that down a bit. Uh, there. So with this off, it's going to sound like this. Now with it on, you're going to see that the highs get a little wider and everything starts to take shape in the way that if you close your eyes, you can imagine little sections. Uh, it's a very change like it's very little, but it does a lot. And I personally always loved doing this to pads. I feel like pads are just can be like you can literally put pads or a good chord progression, repeat it like 20 times, put it on YouTube and call it like chill. And people will actually enjoy it because it's just very mellow. As long as, again, everything sounds open and it has space, that, that is the biggest thing. Now, this tip might not work for all genres, but it will work for the ones where the pads are going to play a huge role in the way that they're going to be used in the track. Now, the next thing is that when it comes down to compression, sometimes you might have a pad that slowly opens up and then it gets too out of hand for you and you're too lazy to automate volume and all that. So what you can do in that scenario is you can utilize a compressor with a low, slow, slow, slow attack and a very, uh, very long release. Uh, this is going to be more of a compressor that's going to add more sustain, but it's also going to tame the sound so it doesn't get too out of hand. So watch. Uh, you don't want to overdo it because you are going to kill the dynamics in the pad, but enough uh, will give you a good vibe. So we're going to... You can see in certain points it gets a bit louder, so we can add that to kind of help us level. Uh, to just give it a nice vibe. If you ever had it, like, how do I compress pads? A lot of people say you shouldn't. You should just automate the volume because pads don't really have a lot of dynamics unless that's the way it was programmed. What I mean by that is the attack and the decay and the sustain values in these pads. Um, sometimes you might find they're a bit too much. So that's where a compressor can come into play. So what I've done, guys, now is added another pluck. Uh, and then we're just going to play this. So we're just going to use that other technique we learned, just, you know, make room for the pluck, which is going to be mainly around this area here. Uh, we're just going to use that mid side EQ, the mono. Let's add just a bass real fast. So I'm gonna add a bass here from Serum, just a saw with a low pass on it. Now, if we did everything right, this pad and this bass are gonna get along nicely. Uh, we're just gonna get rid of some of the low end. So we can use another EQ. Uh, usually people ask, why would you use two EQs? The reason for it is just sometimes we don't wanna mess anything that we did on this side. Again, I'm gonna have to fucking go here. Uh, sorry for my, this, uh, my bad words there because we're making chill stuff, but I'm gonna have to go do this and it, it just looks too messy for me. Uh, so that's where another EQ will come into play and I feel like there's nothing wrong. We're gonna I'll oversample just to be sure. Now, if I get rid of all the stuff we've done to the pad, um, it's sadly... It doesn't really sound that clean, so... Again, these are tips that I've 
I think help a lot. Uh, I, I've developed it for myself, and as you make a lot of music yourself and you do it years by years, you'll discover fixes for problems that might arise, and you could make your own video on tips. Everyone can make that, guys, but this is my solution to a lot of the problems I find most people are going to run into when using pads in their music. The key thing with pads is that they need to add atmosphere, but they shouldn't add dirt. They shouldn't mix, muddy up the mix. And the way you fix that is with these tips. You control it, you tame it, you give what it needs, but not too much and not the stuff it doesn't. And with that, you're going to get something that sounds really smooth, really mellow. Your plug's going to punch through. Everything's going to have space in the mix, and it's going to sound like mwah. But with that being said, guys, that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope these tips help you or anyone out there. Share the video with friends if they're running into these issues. And if you guys have any suggestions, as always, leave them in the comments, guys. I love reading them, and I love making videos on the stuff that you guys want to learn about. Uh, so with that being said, today I just felt like making a video about pads. I hope they help, and you guys have a nice day.